Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live. Lisa, Scott, Dylan, here on a sunshiny morning. Mm -hmm. oh, it's kind of cold outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I want to remind you before we jump into the weather and flood updates, you can watch this anytime on your Facebook feed. We make it into a podcast, so you can go to inform.com slash podcast and look for the Inform Minute, and also you can find us on our Inform YouTube channel. So let's jump right into weather for today. Mm -hmm. I could see, like... It looks nice, and I suppose, you yeah. know, temperature, but you, you could see people's breath a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. So. It was still chilly out there, upper 20s, low 30s. Fargo, you know, to bottomed out about there. That's where most of the area did. It was clear skies for, the mo for most of us throughout the, the uh, overnight, and then the clouds were moving on in, or some spots, of course, the clouds already last night. But mm -hmm. light wind, that's why temperatures are so chilly this morning. And outside in the parking lot, looked a lot of cars. Need that ice scraper. Really? Oh, oh it's, a, it's it's thick. It's April eighteenth. Well, yeah, that's it's perfect time. To, to it's, we got moisture in the air from all I the wanna, melting. It's perfect time. I want to put that away. Yeah. I want to put the ice scraper away. Mm. Need that scraper for a while. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so if you haven't left your house yet, you might need to plan a little bit extra time <laughs> for that, or defrost your car for twenty minutes. However you do it. <laughs> um, and then of course, uh, to later on today, it's not going to be no wind because that sentence just made sense. It is going to be very windy as we go into the <laughs> afternoon out of the southeast. 15 to 25, warming us up to the low to mid 50s, which is nice, that, but well, it's gonna be- the wind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's gonna be windy and we're gonna have an increase in clouds. Mm -hmm. There will be some sunshine, but we're gonna have a lot more clouds and sun by the time we get to the afternoon. Windy, so probably too windy for a kite to- I mean, a kite? Oh, well, yeah. no, too windy. I mean, you can get in a kite, you can maybe fly away. I guess, I suppose. And then we're tracking showers developing overnight tonight, going into tomorrow, maybe a rumble of thunder, certainly a possibility once again. And then tomorrow is just off and on rain showers, mostly in the morning, and then there could be a rain-snow mix to the north, especially the farther north you are, and in northern Minnesota. I think in a lot of areas north of Highway 2 could see some snow. And then Friday, is when we all could see some snow. And when I mean snow, not a lot of snow, just a little, a couple of flurries here and there. It could be some accumulation, but it'll melt pretty quick okay. as we go into the weekend. But it could cause for some travel disruptions as we go into the end of the week. So hmm. that's the forecast. Um, warming up to the upper 40s and low to mid 50s by next week, but we have to get through this weather maker. And of course, everyone's mind is on the flood or the rivers and this moisture. We're not really expecting enough moisture to actually impact the rivers. And all of the river forecasts, which you can find in the Storm Tracker app from the National Weather Service, all of them are including the moisture we're expected to get the next few days. So okay. we're gonna be okay. It's gonna rise it maybe a little bit, but this is gonna be very minimal impact, um, this system, the next couple of days. So. All right, well, that's good news. Yeah, that's good news. So no, a little we, bit of good news in that whole, not so... The flooding know. aspect is good. The yeah. rest of it is not as good. Yes, but, yes. Know. A little bit of snow. We'll, we'll, we'll make it through, I think. All right. Well, I'll All take right. your word for it. Thank you, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. You bet. All right. Talked about some snow, some of that stuff. We'll get back to closures in a sec, but we do have a story that was new overnight. An investigation into what is being called a suspicious death lasted into the early morning hours for Moorhead Police and the Minnesota BCA. It all started yesterday morning after officers were called to do a welfare check around 9.30. It was in the 1800 block of First Avenue South. When they got to that apartment, they went inside, they found a man, that man was dead. WDAY has been making calls throughout the night to get more information. Um, Moorhead Police have only told us that they still had officers on the scene around two o'clock this morning. We are still working to get more information on what exactly happened and all that kind of thing. So stick with us. We'll give you updates when those are available. Yeah, we know that the body is now, you know, having an autopsy done. So, mm -hmm. you know, that part is happening. They will get a preliminary, you know, cause of death soon. And mm -hmm. we, we're working to learn the name. So many unanswered questions right now. But mm -hmm. um, I was looking, digging a little bit more. Moorhead police have said so far that they do not believe there is any threat to the public, too. So okay. I just want to put that out there. Uh, back to the other big story, uh, flooding, overland flooding. Floodwaters over roads. Uh, more roads are shut down this morning because of rising water levels in Cass County. 1, 3, 9, 23, 32 all have portions of those highways closed because mm -hmm. of water on the road. An exit ramp off of I-94 just outside of Castleton still closed. Um, uh, county roads in Clay County, obviously, similar situation as well. County Road 94 is shut down in a couple stretches of County Road 91 and 84. 
along with 14. It's a lot of numbers. Just yeah. outside of just outside of Moorhead, that's all in Clay County. So it just kind of tells you if you're out in the county outside the you know FM area, but in our counties, you're probably going to run into some water on the road. So yeah. be careful, be aware. Um, and if you see a place that hasn't been blocked off yet, you know with cones, you know let let the county know as well. Absolutely. The Northern Valley is also experiencing the impacts of the overland flooding right now. In Minto, North Dakota, roads in that town, they're full of water right now. We had some pretty crazy video this right. morning we showed yeah. of, of those roads. And a stretch of Highway 81, which runs through that town, remains closed this morning. Um, and then near there, on the same highway near Glaston, um, there's also issues there. So issues kind of everywhere. Um, over in northern Minnesota, though, there are no closures this morning, but MnDOT is still warning water on Highway 9 um, is impacting traffic near Ada and then parts of uh, 75 near Halleck as well. Okay, and Fargo police right now are needing a little help finding a missing teenager. We have an update for you. One girl has been found and is safe. Another still missing. Uh, it's now today marks one week since 15-year-old Isabella Nershell went missing. She was last seen in North Fargo. Uh, she's described as 4'11", 115 pounds, blue eyes, reddish brown hair. If you have any information on where she might be, please call Fargo Police. Another teen that we've been tracking her whereabouts, she was found safe. Uh, that was 14-year-old Liliana Jones. She was found yesterday afternoon. North Dakota lawmakers have all but finalized revisions to the state's abortion laws. There was a lot of debate in the House yesterday. Several state Democrats opposed this bill, citing a 2014 statewide vote rejecting a measure to create personhood rights at any stage of development. That bill will now head back to the Senate, where senators are expected to agree with the changes that have been made. If approved there, the bill then will head to Governor Doug Burgum's desk. We have not heard whether he plans to sign or not. Uh, this is a big story we're tracking for you, too. Minnesota House Democrats have unveiled a tax plan that includes payments to taxpayers, a cut on Social Security income, and a new tax credit for families with children. The proposal would return over a billion dollars in uh, back in taxpayers to, as rebates, with payments starting at $270, $275 per person, $550 for joint filers. Um, it's just a proposal at this point. The Minnesota House Taxes Committee is set to look at the bill later today. Well, it looks like chickens might be coming to West Fargo backyards. A new citywide survey shows 62% of people living in West Fargo support that idea. Most agreed that the city should grant permits, which are going to cost 10 to $25 for housing those birds in the, in the yard or at your uh, residence. But those against the idea do have concerns about cleanliness and the noise from the birds. They're also worried about attracting natural predators that want to eat the chickens. Um, the ordinance could be drafted as soon as June or July, so we'll continue to track what happens there. Of course, you know, as we're talking about flooding and, well, and snow in the forecast, golf courses not open. No. Uh, a bummer to a lot of people, but especially, you know, high school athletes who want to start their seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but sweet shots in Fargo coming through. High school golf teams from around the region will be competing in an unconventional, unconventional tournament uh, at Sweet Shots. They're going to be doing a virtual tournament. Uh, teams from Eastern North Dakota will be joining teams like Moorhead and DL to compete in the Torrey Pines. Uh, teams of six will play 18 holes, and they should be, that tournament should be underway, right? Yeah. They started about eight this morning, I think, is when they were going to. Eight or nine, I can't remember okay. for sure. But it's happening oh, okay. today. Nine happening this morning okay. sometime. So that's a cool alternative for them, even I though agree. they can't get out on the course like you'd want to. At least they have an opportunity to do something. All right, big national headline this morning, the defamation case against Fox News. That's going to trial. It was delayed yesterday. There was speculation that Fox News and Dominion voting systems uh, might reach a settlement. That did not happen. Today, 12 jurors and alternates will be selected. The $1.6 billion lawsuit claims Fox News new allegations that Dominion voting systems helped rig the 2020 election were false, but aired them anyway to not lose their viewers. Uh, Fox News believes it should not be held liable for repeating stories that are thought to be newsworthy and Fox is still pushing for a settlement in this case. Hot Mike with Dom Izzo. It's going to be a great show today. On from 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra, also inform.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have Dylan come back because we didn't want him just to talk for an hour. But big wild game last night. If you stayed up, it didn't get done till what, like 1 o'clock? 1, 1, 30. Late. So, Went to crazy. double overtime. It was a thriller. Here he comes. Okay. He's got something to say. Okay. You guys can't just say I'm not going to come back and talk about sports. Okay. <laughs> 
All right, Dylan. So on. before we, uh, you know, get Dom's opinion, we're going to get uh, Yeah, big game. Dylan's. Big, some big hit. It's playoff hockey. It was a good game. I mean, I just fell asleep at 11.30, unfortunately. Well, it started at, what, 8.30? 8.30. You so know, I didn't have the puck drop was until actually like 8.50. So oh, it was like goodness. 20 minutes after yeah, that. That's late. but it was The second good. period ended at like 10.50. It was ridiculous. Mm. And I was very tired. Anyways, <laughs> no games tonight. No Timberwolves. No Wild. They both play tomorrow. Twins do play tonight, but it's okay. six, okay. which is much more reasonable than eight thirty or nine. So, okay, fine. I guess I'll stop running sports talk. You're good. I want to talk. I want to talk about the Wild because I yes. thought they were going to lose them one, to be honest, and they came yeah. out and won, yeah. Yeah. which is exciting. I mean, the Wild looked really good five on five, mm -hmm. but then the two power plays Dallas had in during regulation, at least the first two they had, they got a goal within 15 seconds. It was ridiculous. And a lot of the talk this morning is about Matt Dumba, his yes. big hit on uh, Stars I mean, it, it, was re it was worthy of a minor. But, I mean, he, in my opinion, I mean, he just hit the heck out of the guy. It's playoff hockey, right? It's playoff hockey. you got to <laughs> keep your head on a swivel. I mean, that's just... Starting a little dust up, a little fight afterwards. Yeah. Like, you know, not surprising, but... Not surprising. It's playoff hockey. Well, Stanley... Cut playoffs just starting though. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of hockey to go. Yes. Oh, yeah. Never oh, ending yes. season, but All right. yeah, a thriller last night. And okay, we got to switch. You can go <laughs> because we're going to switch to Bison football. Yeah. Uh, I know, from hockey to football. Also, uh, Dom, of course, is going to be talking about yeah. uh, the hockey game, but he also is going to have former Pro Bison Kylie Manuel back on the show as NDSU is wrapping up spring ball. So you won't want to miss that either. WDAY Extra from 9 to 11 for Hot Mike. You can also get it on inform.com. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a subscription yet to inform.com, go over to inform.com. Look it up. You can get a, your first three months for just 99 cents a month. Great deal. You can get all sorts of sports content. You can get your local news, national headlines as well, and weather. So all sorts of good stuff. Uh, remember to join us throughout the day for mm -hmm. our newscasts. Uh, Dylan will be back on here in just two hours for our news at 11, an hour-long newscast. And, of course, this afternoon, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10, and we'll be back tomorrow morning. First news is every weekday morning from 5 to 7. Have a great day. Bye.